Good morning, friends. We will continue our discussion on Chapter Six on Actions, Spark our DD Actions, and this is our third method we have, which we will discuss in this video is aggregate. So aggregate is very much similar to fold, where it will take the initial value, a zero value, and then in in fold we were only doing like one operation, like for example sum, and it will give the same type in the return. But here in aggregate, there is a small thing that we can. There is a small difference. So this one is actually uh, doing the operation on the each of the partitions, and once we combine it, the combine the after combine after combining all these like results from the each of the partitions, we can create we can perform any type of combine operation, uh, and give us a new uh, a new type a return type. For example, if we are using the double, the sum is always a double value. We can combine it. We can combine all this into all uh, for all the partitions. We have got the sum for from each of the partitions, and we combine it to do a string, for example. So this is a difference, and we can we don't need to like necessarily return the the sum of uh, the the total sum of all those partitions, but we can combine it into a string format, into a string or whatever, just to display that okay, this is the, this is the uh, this is the sum for each of the partitions. So this is the only difference. But in for the for the fold, it, uh, the return that the sum would be always uh, the same double type. It cannot be combined using some other uh, mechanism. So, in other words, aggregate gives us more control uh, for combining option. Yeah, the result of the function could be any type and not necessarily same as this RDD type. Okay, now let's everything is same. Uh, so, let's uh, write some unit tests to understand it better for the aggregate method. So, I'm in my IntelliJ now, and uh, let's write the aggregate method. So. To save some time, I will just copy this previous unit test case. So I will just use this fold method. So test the spark aggregate method. Aggregate, and similarly, I will put aggregate here. So previously, we have written reduce spark reduce fold. Fold is uh, so the reduce was without any initializer. It will just have one parameter for doing some max, min, whatever. For fold method, we had got initial uh, zero value, and uh, we are just returning this value. And let's see that what is the difference between aggregate now. So I will just put aggregate. Okay, uh, sorry, aggregate. And here, okay. So as mentioned that uh, in the in the theoretical section that we can have a separate for combination for combined op uh, operation, right? So we can. It's not necessary that we always pause, uh, return the same uh, type as it was used for this summing. So here, uh, just keep it simple. Let me just uh, use the same double sum. Okay, and I'll pass it here. So what it will do is that for each of the partitions, it will do the sum for each of them, and after that, it will combine again. For the combination, it will again sum the results of all those partitions into one. So it's, exa it's exactly same as what we are doing before for fold and reduce, but uh, yeah, this is something uh, which is which can be customized. Okay, so we have got this, and uh, let's run this first at the very basic test case so that it exactly matches with the fold. Okay, and then let me just change this aggregate, okay. aggregate uh, here as well as aggregate here. Control Alt Alt and Alt, and let's run this first. Let me run this method now. Uh, just clicking this run here. So we are doing the sum for each partition, and then accumulating it for all the partitions. Again, we are summing it. So it will take some time to first. So it's running now. Get some space here. So it will again do the same thing. That will print for ten times, and then you will get the average of it. It took around one point uh, two uh, seconds. Okay. So as mentioned, that the difference between this is uh, between between an aggregate or fold and reduce is that for the fold we provided the zero initial value same as here, and then we actually did the sum, and once we have the sum for each of the partitions, then we again combined all those again summing it. So let's uh, tweak about it. That that was uh, we can additional thing that we can do. What I can do is that just do a, a sum here, just get a max. Okay. And change it to max. Okay. Similarly, I will create a minimum. Control D min, and then again I will do a min. Okay. So what I'm doing is that 
I mean, the first two parts is same. That for each of the partitions, it starts with the zero value, and each partition will be having the sum of it. And in the first one, I will take the sum of all those uh, combined. Using for the combined operation, I will do the sum of all of them. In the second one, in the max, all the partitions having the final aggregated value, I will take the which has got the max uh, out of that. Similarly, the min out of that. So this will give me for all those fourteen partitions. What is the max sum for each of the partition and the main of these partitions? And similarly, I will print it here. Uh, Control D, so max. So this is I am just showing this demonstration so that I mean we can have this extra like customization for aggregation that uh, which is similar different than the fold and reduce as previously that we can also just do some other custom operations like just with the max and min instead of just creating the sum, right? So max and min, and this is actually actually the technically it's like uh, I get max for each partition, right? Max from each partition and max from for all. I mean for all actually. <laughs> Just, just let me change this name for all partitions. Okay, and then I will do it for this for all partitions. Okay, now let's run this. Now let's run this by this clicking this run button here. So I expect that minimum out of this should be always zero, right? Because this is why we are uh, initializing it all the partitions with zero. So the minimum I am expecting for each is to be zero, and. Uh, yeah, maximum should be uh, for because we are having fourteen partitions, so it would be just uh, sum of all those like the maximum out of all those partitions for the aggregated sum. Let's see uh, if our expectation is okay. So it's correct. So for the first iteration, minimum is zero. Max for that particular partition was uh, see this number. Okay, so I think it should be same for all partitions because it equally divides among those fourteen. Uh, Partitions that we have created, then the slices that we have created. Okay, so yeah, so our expectation is correct, and it took more time because, of course, we are doing several other operations on that one million uh, data size. Okay, so this is what was it was different for aggregate. We have some more customization on the third part that how we want to get the sum of all those partitions and how we want to uh, combine it. By just taking max, I'm just taking sum by default, or max or min. So, guys, this was all about aggregate. So, we covered uh, three uh, important uh, actions in this chapter, chapter six, which is uh, reduce, fold, and aggregate. And we also test uh, written some unit test case to understand uh, all those these three with the actual code. So, there are some some differences between these, so which I have highlighted here. So, reduce is similar to fold, except reduce takes a zero value. As an initial default value for each partition, but for fold we can explicitly provide uh, the initial value. For example, here uh, we have seen that the fold can be is all. I mean, by default we can take zero, but we can also change it to say we start to start with ten. So on top of that, it will be taking the sum of all of all of that. So this is only a small difference. And reduce is similar to aggregate with a difference. Reduce return type should be the same as this RDD element type, whereas ag aggregate can return any type. Uh, the, the combined operation is different, right? In aggregate, fold is similar to reduce, except it takes a zero value. I think it's the same thing as we have, as we have given here. But it's, except it takes a zero value as an initial value assigned by developer for each partition. Fold is similar to aggregate with a difference. Fold return type should be the same as this RDD element type, whereas aggregate can return any type. As we discussed, that aggregate has having this third parameter for combining, which can be any, it can return anything. And aggregate is similar to fold and reduce, except it returns RDD of any type, whereas other two return same RDD type. So these are like basically uh, um, all of these like are reiterated, but the only difference is that we have already seen by writing a lot of unit test cases. So guys, this was all about chapter six. We covered a lot of things about these three methods. In the next chapter, we will do we'll cover chapter seven is our Spark RDD transformations, in which we will cover map, flat map, and filter methods. We'll see you all in the next video.